So all semester, you have all been doing presentations. So for our last class, I want to uh, tell you a story about myself and some things I learned during my time here in Thailand. So I call this story accidentally hitchhiking in Laos. Does anyone know what hitchhiking is? No. Hitchhiking. Everybody say hitchhiking. 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 Yes. It's where, has anyone ever seen a guy on the side of the road with his thumb sticking out? Anyone? This person is trying to hitch a ride. Get a ride from some passing car. So this is hitchhiking. Hitchhiking. Yeah, so they will either uh, get a ride for free or pay them some money. They're just trying to get a ride somewhere. Do you have hitchhikers in Thailand? Yes. 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 Okay, so you have them. <laughs> okay, so this is a story about that. Does anyone know who these people are? No? Any guesses? <laughs> yes, this is me and my family, my very first family photo. This is me as a baby, my parents. And this is in Denver, Colorado when I was born. So yes, I was a baby one, at one time. <laughs> and as things happened to all of us, the years went by. I grew up, went to elementary school, middle school, high school. And then went on to university, getting my bachelor's degree, getting my master's degree. And finally, which hopefully all of you will do one day, I graduated. Yay! <laughs> which one is me? Anyone know? Which one? Yeah. In the middle, yes, this is me. In the middle, the, I have blonde hair in this picture. My hair is dark now. Um, but I was wearing, does anyone know what this is called? This is called a leg. Everybody say leg. 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 This is a Hawaiian leg. And I'm not Hawaiian but I just wanted to be different. So I wore a Hawaiian play on my graduation day. Does anyone do that in Thailand? Yes. yes. They do? Yes. They wear Hawaiian plays? Yes. yes. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. Okay. So after I graduated, I said, hey, mom and dad, I want to go traveling. This is my biggest dream in my life, my passion. I wanted to travel the world. So, that's what I said. Where do you think I wanted to go? From looking at this picture. Phuket. Phuket? <laughs> yeah? Maldives, Maldives. 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 Yes, you're, you're, you're close. Yes, I said I want to go to, oh, so my words are gone. I want to go to Thailand. Why do 
might want to go next? Does everybody in my new said, why do you want to go all halfway around the world? And if you want to go, you have to find somebody to go with you. And I said, I didn't find anybody who I wanted to go with. So I decided, even though I could not find anybody who wanted to do what I wanted to do, I was going to do this anyway. So it was back to Colorado, snowy, cold, and I had been dreaming of somewhere warm, the beach, somewhere with the water, beautiful days. So that was my dream. So I want to leave Colorado. I want to go somewhere warm, was what I was thinking. Does anyone know what this expression is about? <laughs> this is you're letting the baby bird leave the nest. So finally, after many years of telling my parents that I want to go traveling, and after I graduated, they finally agreed, okay, my daughter must really want this, so we're going to let her go. So I got a job and uh, at AVAC, and uh, so I had a Skype interview, and two weeks later, I was flying on a plane to AVAC. So <laughs> it was very quick, it happened very quick, and before I left, my mom, she makes jewelry, and she gave me this necklace before she left, and on it, we'll show, show this around, on one side it says, there is no shortcut to anywhere worth going. There's no shortcut to anywhere worth going. And on the other side is my favorite part. It says, I will go confidently in the direction of my dreams. Confidently. So that is uh, my necklace that my mom gave to me before I left. And this is the advice on the necklace. Go confidently in the direction of your dream. And I want to share this with you because if you have a dream and the doors are open for you and you have the opportunity, you have to go with confidence. You have to, don't be, uh, you might be nervous. I was nervous to come here, but you have to go with confidence. And you know that is the direction you want to go in and go for it. So finally, I arrived. Where is this? Yeah. Abac. This is where we are all at right now. And this is what Thailand really looks like. Okay, this is, I did not get the beach and the water. But <laughs> I came pretty close. I got the blue skies and palm trees. So I made it. Oh, it was remote again. But that says, I made it. And I cannot read this language. <laughs> uh, okay, so I forget what my words are there. Uh, all right, but anyway, so after, that is really where the story just begins. Okay, so I told you I went hitchhiking in Laos, right? So, uh, so, with our three month summer break that we have every summer, I decided I was going to go traveling. Travel, I didn't only, Thailand was my first choice, but I also wanted to go to many other countries also. So with our first three month summer break, I decided I was going to go somewhere. Where is this? Do you know this country is? Wow. 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 Laos. Yes, it says Laos right here. Laos. So with our first three month break, I took a train from Bangkok all the way up here to Takei, middle of Laos. We took another bus to the capital city of Vientiane. This was about a 15 hour bus ride to get here. I'm not a good bus, but I was looking for adventure and so I chose this path. I wanted something exciting different. Not so easy. I didn't care if it was easy. I just wanted some excitement. So that was definitely exciting. 
Then I took another bus up to Grand Canary, another uh, 10 hour bus ride. I took only buses in Laos, only. And Bang Pian is a very uh, popular city. Has anyone heard of it? Everyone say Bang Pian. Bang Pian. Bang Pian. This is popular for tubing. You know, tubing. Tubing. Everybody can say tubing. 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 Yes, if you're sitting in a tube, a tube is filled with air. And you're sitting on a river and you're floating down the river. And it's just fun. Has anybody ever been tubing? No? It's very fun. You have many rivers in Thailand. It's a surprise if you don't do tubing. Okay, so this is tubing. It's fun. It's very popular for 18 to 25 year olds. This is like a party city. They have the parties along the river. It's very fun. So then I took another bus after that to Luan Kabong. Another 10 hours of winding roads. Another one all the way to Wai Thai. And finally, I was trying to get out of Laos. My visa was running out. So I wanted to go to Vietnam next. And I stopped after the city of Kiao. I was taking this road. I ended up in a tiny city. Uh, past Nam Piao, near the border of Vietnam. And unfortunately, when I arrived there, it was raining. If you all remember, this was during the time in Thailand when it, they were having the floods. So they were having a similar problem in Laos at that time. So for two weeks, it had been raining on me, and it was cold, and I was trying to get to the border of Vietnam. And I was uh, alone, traveling alone, but I had met some people. When you travel, you get to meet people also. So I had met this group of about 15 people, and we were all waiting for this bus. We had to get up at 4 a.m., very early in the morning. And we had to cross this river and try to wait on the other side for this bus that was supposed to come. And so we had been waiting in the rain, me and 15 other people, other travelers, we'd been waiting in the rain for about five hours. And I had no jacket with me, no rain gear, nothing. And everything I had was wet, pouring rain on us. And I was just standing under a little uh, overhead thing. So, we waited and waited, and the bus never came. We waited for nothing, essentially. It was too rainy and too dangerous, so the bus was not coming on that day. And out of these 15 people that I was with, they had all decided they had had enough of Laos. They were tired of the frustrations, so they were going to leave, they were going back to take another bus 15 hours back to Luang Prabang and take flights to Hanoi, Vietnam. Now, I said, well, first of all, I don't have enough money to do that. And second of all, I didn't want to sit on a bus for another 15 hours. I had been on so many buses, I didn't want to do that. So I decided I was going to stay in this town alone and uh, try to find a different way to get to Vietnam. So all these people left, they hopped on a song cow, you know the song cows, right? The trucks, you have them in Thailand, song cow. How do you say it? Song cow. Song cow, okay. So they all hopped on a song cow and I, uh, they waved goodbye, good luck to me, and I was there. Now I was standing completely alone, rain pouring on me, and I was going to have to figure out how I would get to Vietnam by myself. So I bought a rain poncho, and I decided uh, I was not going to give up until I got there. 
This is where I was actually at. This is the city. It's called, well, you can't see it. This is called Muan Kwa Laos. It's a very tiny city. And I was standing right about here. Well, uh, some very infrequently trucks would come along. And I was decided I was going to look for a big truck. Some big truck that could get over the very steep mountains. So some trucks were coming along here, and I was standing right about here, and I was uh, knocking on windows of cars that would come by. And one man came along, he rolled down his window, he saw me in the rain, and I told him, and he spoke a little English, luckily, and I told him, I will pay you all of the money I have left if you can take me to the border of Vietnam. And he agreed. He agreed to do this. So I got in, just sitting on boxes, bags, other things. There were two other people in the back. And I just hopped in. So this is what I you call hitchhiking. I didn't know I was hitchhiking at the time, but uh, that is what I was doing, hitchhiking. So, this is a photo of inside of the truck that I was sitting in. So I, for five hours, I was sitting here with this man and uh, these other people that we went along this very uh, dangerous road. And we came across a river in the road. And we got stuck right about up here, you can't see it, but this is actually the road where these cars are trying to come. I will never forget this man's words he said to me when we reached that point. He said, Gina, we stop here. And when he said that, my heart sunk. I said, no, no. We were so close. We were 20 kilometers away from the border of Vietnam. And now there was a big river in my path. It's going to stop me. So what could I do? So now I was stuck in this tiny town. It was even smaller than the one before. And I was now even more stuck. So I took a risk. And now it seemed like it did not pay off. It's worse. So this is, but luckily this town, this is the road. Uh, this town did have one guest house in it, one. And this is where I had to stay for the night. And this town is so small, I don't even know the name of it. It was, uh, you cannot find it on any map. So this is where I had to stay, and that was one of the lowest points <laughs> in my whole trip. I had, I was very depressed, crying, cold, and I had to stay here alone. I didn't know anybody or how I would get out of this situation. But the people working at this guest house told me, if the rain stops tonight, the bus might come in the morning. So I was hoping all night, please bus come. <laughs> so, in the morning, I was very lucky, and this, these words, this is a new language. <laughs> the, this says, the bus came. So the bus did come in the morning. And this is the bus to Vietnam that I got on. The road to Vietnam was just as difficult. So it was muddy, we got stuck. Um, it was very dangerous, very dangerous. Here's another example. We got stuck many times. But finally, I did make it to Vietnam. Anyone know where this is? This is in the northern part of Vietnam. This is called Sapa, Vietnam, where they have rice terraces rice fields. It's very beautiful. I was just so happy to be dry. <laughs>
Anyone know where this is? This is a famous place. It's a world heritage site. It's called Ha Long Bay, Vietnam. Ha Long Bay, Vietnam. And unfortunately, these words are not showing up. I don't know why this computer does that. Okay. Uh, how about this place? This is near Ho Chi Minh City. Yes. These are called the Kuchi Tunnels. Kuchi Tunnels. Kuchi Tunnels. Yes, so the Vietnamese soldiers would hide in these small tunnels uh, from the American soldiers because the American soldiers were too big and they could not fit into these holes, so the Vietnamese people would hide in them from the American troops. And the point of my story is this. Always follow your own path, even if it means going alone. <laughs> so even if nobody else is going to follow you, even if you have to stay in some city by yourself, alone in the rain, uh, the, my point is, if everybody else is doing something else for you and it does not feel right to you, it doesn't matter what they're doing. Do what is right for you, okay? Even if you have to be alone. <laughs> and if you're going to dream, dream big, okay? I, had, I was not happy with the American dream. I did not want to stay in America, get a boyfriend, get married, have kids, get a white picket fence house, okay? I wanted to travel the world, so that's just my dream, and I want to encourage you all, dream big, you can reach these things if you uh, let them take time and you work on them every day. And follow your dreams. Important point I want to emphasize, emphasize is your, your dreams. Not your parents, not your friends, you. Your dreams. What do you want in life? Because in the end, it is your life. Not your parents, your friends. You have to live your life. So reach your dreams and don't stop. Finally, <laughs> never give up. You can't give up your life. <laughs> so, even if you have a river in front of your road, you think you, there's no way to get across this river, there is. You have to find a way. So, never give up. And so, my, just like I said, my final piece of advice, always go confidently in the direction of your dreams. And never give up. So, thank you.